So in this video, we're going to talk about how you set up to do a loss length test. When we're at our home screen, we have all of our applications available. And the application that we're going to talk about here is the loss and length. And it's really important to note that it is loss and length as well as polarity. And there is no other tester on the market that does a length measurement. And so we'll, you'll see that there's going to be pass fail for length. And we can also be using length in some of our limit calculations. So I enter into the application by simply tapping on it. And now I'm in that application and I'm doing all this from my MPOLP, my power meter, because that's where all test results are stored. And when you can, your configuration it does send the test configuration to the to the source it will also recognize if you have the wrong source connected so if you have, have set up for a multi-mode test and you're connected to a single mode source it will tell you that uh, and let you know that the test is not going to work once i'm in the lost length i do have utility that is called polarity check and when i go into the polarity check it just checks the polarity of the system that i'm connected to and this is really helpful especially in existing installations where you may not know what kind of polarity it is and because we do pass fail on polarity you need to know what it is so again polarity check very simple straightforward way to find out the polarity of a system the more button gives you some additional options and starting at the top uh, you can look at your test results stored for that project you can change whether all your tests are going to be measuring in feet or meters you can turn your sound on or off you may be able to hear the the clicking and the when they connect together it makes a noise you can also have a negative loss warning on or off by default it's on and we recommend you leave it that way and you have an unsaved result warning and this is if you're needing to save results you want to leave this on and it prevents you from exiting the results screen without having saved results if you're just testing and you don't care about saving you're going to want to turn that off so you're not being annoyed by uh, prompts to save results the meat of setting up for a loss length test is under your test configuration. So once you go into your test configuration, you'll notice this looks pretty much identical to what the project setting looked like. And you have the ability through your menu to remove test configurations, add them, copy them, or set them active. And again, like the project, there is a on-screen shortcut to set something to be active. So I select it, and that's the warning that I mentioned earlier that you would see. I've set it to a single mode fiber link test. I'm connected to a multi-mode source it's going to give me a warning but when i set this one active i won't see such a warning i then can enter into that test configuration so i'm editing the test configuration which is called mmf link and it tells me when it was created i get to choose my source type whether i'm connected to a multi-mode or a single mode source i get to set my test limit and in this case i'm using a link validation test limit which means that i have to enter in db values for the two wavelengths that I tested. For multi-mode, it will be 1300 and 850. I have to tell it what polarity, that's why the polarity check is useful, and I have to tell it the maximum length before it will cause a fail. Then I have my 1300 wavelength, what is considered a pass for it or a fail for it, and the same with the 850 nanometer. I then return back to my test configuration, and I'm able to set up my cable and connectors. So I just chose a generic MPO fiber. I've said that it's OM4 refractive index which will have an impact on your length measurement and what your connector type is the reference method one chord reference method is the really the standard one in some cases you need, may need to do a three chord but with mpo because of the pin done pin doing a two chord is really uh, not possible you are also able to select what fibers are used for pass fail analysis all fibers are always measured it's just whether or not if they had excessive loss that would cause a fail or not. In this case, I've turned off five, six, seven, and eight because SR4 technology does not use those. And although I want to see the loss of them, I don't want to uh, have it impact my pass fail. And with that, you are now set up to start testing. And the first step to that will be to set a reference. Find out more at Bicom's website.